Hey guys, welcome back to the Duck Hill Workshop. And my name is Ben, and I'm really glad you're here. This is part two of our timber frame garden shed build. So you saw maybe saw in the previous uh, episode one, part one, thing one, thing one, thing two, red fish, blue fish. Um, that we'd worked on getting the the gravel foundation. Uh, concrete block and skids, six by six skids, set up, leveled, square, whatever, and then built the two by six uh, stick framed floor deck. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how we milled all of the lumber. Started, we, so basically, we used four oak logs from the property that came down in a tornado last year and then milled them down into inch and a quarter boards, screwed them down to the floor deck, and we're rocking and rolling. <clears throat> Final part of all of that is treating the floor deck with a 50-50 mixture of used motor oil and diesel fuel. So that can be any combination of motor oil, uh, depending on what color you want. Um, apparently, used diesel oil will give you a much much darker color we ended up with who knows what because uh my brother helped me get um a couple gallons out of a bulk tank from an auto shop <clears throat> uh, so it could be pretty much anything synthetic conventional whatever <clears throat> um and uh and then especially because I mixed it in such a big batch, we made a five gallon batch, like <clears throat> it could, it might not be a true 50-50. And so I think like you can experiment with your proportions, you can experiment with the types of oil, you could use new oil for that matter, uh, and they'll all have different properties. Uh, I do think that, I know that something happens to oil when it's consumed in an engine, like the heat cycle and, and just the friction and whatever, <clears throat> changes the oil and I but I don't know if that affects its ability to protect the wood or not I don't know so we'll find out but if you do try this you can if you can't find used motor oil you can just as easily go buy new motor oil <clears throat> um, certainly for exterior use oh <clears throat> excuse me but certainly for exterior use only uh, it certainly smells a little bit still. It's been drying for about four days, but
is a balmy 12 degrees on this beautiful November day. And, and by that I mean it's the first week of November. Snow before my birthday, makes me happy. Uh, however, it means that I've got to uncover the floor deck here. Um, there are four boards that <clears throat> need to get trimmed to fill the final gap. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to roll back the tarp. I'm going to grab those four boards. We're going to measure the space and then take them into the shop and trim them on the table saw. So. Let's jump in and see what we can do. Quick check in. I finished uh, ripping edges on these green uh, red oak boards, which led to an interesting thing that I hadn't even considered. And part of it's just a, a lack of maintenance um, I'm behind in in rewaxing my table saw table. But as I was cutting, I was you saw I was building up like a pile of shavings and and sawdust and whatever on the edge of the pile or on the edge of the table. <laughs> When I went to brush that away, I discovered all this flash rust underneath the pile because there's so much moisture in these boards yet. You know, they're coming off logs that have been sitting, but they've been sitting in ground contact or maybe they've been in the pile, um, but they're still, uh, oak especially, holds just tons of moisture. Uh, I haven't put my meter on them to see where these are at, but I'd be willing to bet they're between 20 and 30 percent, <clears throat> which is also part of why they're so damn heavy. But you can see as, as they're being cut, it's like cutting into a rare steak or like a seared rare steak. The outside looks nice because it's been air drying for a couple days. Uh, but as soon as you make that rip, the inside still like this meaty pinky red color. And yeah, it just looks like like fresh steak or something. So. Anyways, I took a break to, to spray down my tabletop, my table saw with WD-40. Uh, however, these are all cut. I cut a 90 degree edge and these are because they have true edges, true. I don't have a jointer, so this is true as I can get on the table saw. Um, true edges and a 90 degree uh, end. So these should actually butt up and fit really nice. Uh, I also took the torch and just uh, charred that inside edge where they're going to butt up together. What I think I'm actually going to end up doing is taking up all of the floorboards um, and charring edges and coating all of them in um, a 50-50 motor oil diesel fuel mix um, as a, a DIY pressure treatment um, just to help them last a little bit longer. And really because Red oak will last a phenomenal long time as long as it's kept dry. And so what concerns me is just that those floorboards are exposed to the elements underneath um, and like condensation can build up under there. Uh, and so it's kind of within that two foot splash zone of the, of the ground, even though there shouldn't be any water standing underneath there, it just, I don't want to have to take the frame apart or lift it off the deck in two years because red oak will rot surprisingly quickly if exposed to moisture. Um, so it'll be a little extra work. It'll suck in the cold, but we'll pull all those up and treat them and then put them all back down. So. All right, let's go put these on the deck so they don't twist and warp and get weird. Get back to it. All right, there it is. All the floorboards are screwed down. Uh, as I was screwing them down, even though 
These, uh, the ones that I just trimmed are nice and fit together very cleanly. Um, the other ones uh, don't, so they're not 100% perfect. Um, and I'm still debating, I guess. I said I was going to uh, pull these all up and rip them down. Um, I think what I might do is just <clears throat> treat them as they are. Um, and then there's still enough room to crawl underneath and, and paint the bottoms um, of these, of all the boards. Um, so I think I'm going to do that instead. Uh, but right now, so the next step is to take the circle saw, trim all the edges off um, on both ends, and then come back with the uh, with a router and a flush trim bit and clean up that edge flush to the uh, 2x6, the green treated 2x6 there. Um, and then I, just like these boards, um, I'll char the outside edge and then we'll treat everything with the, the motor oil and, and diesel fuel 50-50 mixture. So that's the next step after I, uh, I think first I'm going to pull the tarp all the way off and, and sweep just to get the, get the snow off. So let's do that quick. All right, so I ran a little errand today to get like two and a half gallons of used motor oil, thanks to my brother and the Kletchman Garage in Denison, Minnesota. We just dumped it out of their uh, their waste oil uh, catch, <clears throat> and at five gallons of diesel fuel, which means I'm going to steal two and a half gallons, dump it into that bucket, and we'll have five gallons of. Uh, mix to treat this floor and we're going to paint the top and the bottom but today i'm going to paint the top because it's easier and i think saturday it's supposed to be 40 degrees it'll be beautiful for crawling around underneath the underneath the deck here <clears throat> um first things first i've got to take the cirque saw and cut our edges to length i'm going to char the ends um and then mix this up and start painting. So, we'll get that done real quick and uh, try to think if there's anything else. Oh, I already, uh, earlier before I turned the camera on, I already came out with the chalk line and snapped my line so I can see where I'm cutting. Um, and I'm gonna cut a little bit away from it. Um, Cause I'll try and find my, uh, I will try and find my, uh, 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 flush trim bit for the router and trim it right to the edge of the the edge of the green treated 2x6. If I can't find that then I'll come back out with my block plane <clears throat> and clean up those edges. So all right let's get this cut. All right now that that's done I'm gonna go get my torch. We're gonna char all these ends um, and then we'll mix up that, uh, the fuel. Okay, now that the uh, ends are charred, which seals up that end grain, or helps seal up that end grain, and stop it from wicking moisture through, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mix diesel fuel in that. I ju just, before, I should say like, uh, I should have charred these ends before I installed them. I should have cut these to the proper length and charred the ends before I installed them on the frame. Burning them on the frame like this was a bad idea. Um, and then especially be super duper careful anytime you have flame near combustible material. And the nice thing, people have asked about the flammability of this, like, oil and the diesel fuel are not like match light and once the diesel fuel evaporates off of this it shouldn't like there's no flammability to this uh, when it's done so I'm gonna mix that up and we're gonna start painting this half
Okay, well, that's where my camera died in the cold while we were putting that uh, finish on. I did finish the, um, the oil, oiling the deck, and then not only did we finish oiling the top, uh, my mom and our good friend Malia crawled underneath while I was gone getting my puppy Moose uh, over the weekend, and they painted oil and diesel fuel on the bottom. So we are completely sealed, top and bottom. Uh, based on, it's now, the top's been drying for almost a week and is almost soaked in. So you, there are definitely spots where it looks like it wants a second coat and there are spots that still have, you can feel a little bit of oil on top. So we're gonna leave it uncovered, we're gonna let it continue to dry and we'll see where it is in a week or two because uh, we've got some warmer temperatures coming. we got a little bit of snow coming, but I don't think it'll be significant. Um, and yeah, so here's a couple pictures. I hope you have a good afternoon, evening. Here's a couple pictures. I hope you had enjoyed this and I look forward to showing you when we start cutting timbers. That'll be coming next. Until next time.